Tell me one thing. Why do we think illiterate people are somewhat second class citizens? Why is the onus of being literate always on the individual and not on the state? Tabhi toh, without even thinking twice, we end up calling beggars and the homeless encroachers, a nuisance, freeloaders and what not. And we end up doing this not because they're poor, but because they're illiterate. And the reason they're illiterate is because they're poor. The classic chicken and egg situation. See, what I'm trying to say is that koi jaan boochkar anpad nahi rehna chata. Illiteracy is not a failure of an individual, but that of the state. The fact that even in 2021, 287 million Indians can't read and write, the fact that 37% of world's illiterates live in India should alone shame us to pieces. See, illiteracy in India is a problem that has complex dimensions. It has more or less got to do with the disparities that exist within the country. There are gender imbalances, income imbalances, state imbalances, caste imbalances and technological barriers that shape the literacy rates that exist in the country right now. Let's first talk about the gender imbalance. 2011 ke census ke according, literacy rates among men was 82.14% and 65.46% among women. And it's needless to say the impact it has had on women. Hum shehro mein rehne walo ko lagta hai ki gender discrimination ab exist nahi karta when it comes to education. But it's kind of a misinformed opinion. You know, 47.78% of out-of-school children in India are girls. They will be calculated as illiterate women in the next census and this will have an impact on the education of their children. Yes, the Right to Education Act of 2009 has resulted in increased enrollment of children in schools, but the act is applicable for children between 6 to 14 years of age. Children, especially girls, who drop out of school after 14 years of age, find it almost impossible possible to continue their education. And what makes it worse for girls is the dismal condition of government schools across the country. Jahan peene ke liye paani nahi hota, functioning toilets nahi hote, hand washing area nahi hota, jiski wajay se unhe school chhodna padta hai. You know, according to a study, more than 59% of government schools across the country don't have drinking water facilities. Now let's look at economic disparity. See, it's a known fact that rich households have easy access to quality education as compared to poor households. And poor households, due to lack of skills, knowledge and opportunities, are forced to work as unskilled labor. And family ki basic needs puri karne ke chakkar mein education backseat le leti hai. That's why 60 lakh children are still out of school in India. Also, one more thing. Every 11th child in India is a victim of child labor. Over 10.1 million kids are working in various industries to support their families. These sky-high rates are once again a result of poverty caused due to illiteracy. Since their parents are illiterate and their families live in poverty, they're stripped of a normal childhood and forced to work. So if their parents were literate, they would have had a decent job, decent education, education and would not have to work in dump yards. Yes, various government schemes like the midday meals for that matter have really jacked up the enrollment numbers but that incentive hasn't actually reaped that many benefits. The third most important aspect is the state imbalance. States that spend heavily on education seem to have higher literacy rates than those who don't spend that much. Kerala is a case in point. The state spends $685 per child, which also explains its success. On the other hand, Uttar Pradesh spends the least amount except Bihar and Jharkhand on education of each child of the state. The other aspect for dismal literacy rates is inadequate school facilities. Often the teaching staff that is employed across the government-run schools is inefficient and unqualified. At present, there are about 50 50% vacancies for teachers in government-run schools across the country. 92% of government schools are yet to be fully implemented under the RTE Act. Add to this the dropout rate of students and you'll get a cocktail that'll leave you with a splitting headache. According to a government report, dropout rate at the secondary school level in India is more than 17%. More girls drop out than boys for reasons known to us all. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, caste disparity. Bihar, Jharkhand and Uttar Pradesh are among the bottom five states in terms of literacy of Dalits in India. The the literacy rate of female Dalits in Bihar was 38.5% in 2011. It is still 30 years behind India's national literacy rate which was 43.7% in 1981. Yes, we do have reservation for SCs, STs, OBCs and other minorities, but it still hasn't been enough to bring them at par with the upper castes. Why? Because our education policy bends towards the preservation of differences between castes. Dalits have considerably worse opportunities to get education and achieve success. And lastly, let's talk about the technological barrier or the digital divide. This pandemic made us realize how deep the digital divide is in our country. Even the education ministry acknowledged it in its recent report. It says more than 2.9 crore children in India do not have access to digital devices, pointing out the disadvantage these students have had to face for over a year and a half with schools shut due to COVID. And now the fear is that the school will not go to school, online classes will not go to school, maybe they will ultimately drop out. See, I'm not denying the fact that various governments over the years have come up with different literacy programs across the board. But why is it that despite all our efforts since independence, we still have the world's largest population of people who can't read and write? 
is it the people's fault the government's fault the society's fault or are we all responsible for it the fact that you're watching this video right now means you're privileged right and i think it's time for us to move beyond our occasional pang of privileged guilt and be sincere about it because after all the money to support them is going to come out of your pocket my pocket whether we like it or not in the form of taxes taxes to feed them clothe them shelter them give jobs to them but in all of this the cost of ignoring this problem will come to haunt us all whether rich or poor yes i'm thinking aloud but what do you think tell me in the comments below and for more such videos keep watching india times